One of the most forgotten things about home theater is acoustic treatment and how important it is to having a top tier performance in your home theater system. And you can hear as I start to change rooms, you start to hear different levels of echo. As I move into rooms that have more hard surfaces, maybe no carpet, no blinds, things like that, you can hear in my voice how things start to sound a little more echoey. As I move into a room that has a little bit more treatment, maybe more carpet, more blinds, or actual acoustic treatment like I have in this room, you can hear how my voice starts to tighten up, starts to sound better. That's the power of acoustic treatment, and it's one of the best things that you can do for your system. I'm gonna take it to the next level. I have here with me some bass traps down here that I'm going to put on the wall and I have a certain frequency range that I'm trying to treat. We're going to run some measurements before I put these up and after to see if acoustic treatment really makes any kind of difference. Alright guys, so I have you pointed at the screen. I have my laptop just over here, this is where I'll be standing. But I'm gonna point you at the screen so you guys can see these measurements here. So right now, the first measure we're gonna take is the room with no base traps. They're not in the room at all. And then we'll do another measure with them in the positioning that I want them to be in. So we're gonna measure between five hertz up to 500 hertz. In my room, I currently have a very bad null that you'll see between about 55 hertz up to 90, 95. It's a giant hole. And I have an idea of how to fix it, but I wanna see if base traps will do anything first before I make other adjustments. So I'm going to run this calibration 5 to 500. We're kind of paying attention more to the 60 to 100 hertz range where I'm trying to fix. But it, these panels will do 60 hertz up to as, as high as I want to hear, 15, 20 kilohertz. So they're going to cover a lot of range, but they're made to really absorb some of that low base energy. So let's just run the calibration how it is. And this is all four subs plus my Arundel 1528s. They're set to large. So this is all the bass in the room. Let's see what happens. All right, so this is five hertz up to 500, but we're kind of more paying attention between five hertz up to 100, 120 in that ballpark here. So. We have a relatively decent line from 5 hertz up to, let's say, about 60. It's, it's not too bad, right? But we have this incredibly bad dip right here between 60 to 100-ish. And this is a very important frequency because not only do things like kick drums or car doors or things like that lie, so do voices, natural human voices. Uh, especially male voices, they sit in that range. So this is a giant hole, and I mean giant. Most things are 80, 85 dB. This is down here near 60, 62, 65, um, some of it is, 70. So we're about 20, 25 dBs quieter than the rest of the frequencies. And even at 180, 200 hertz, there's another dip there. So this is my room with no treat. well, there's treatment, but there's no EQ or anything like that. This is, it's all turned off. I'm going to put the bass traps up on the wall and we're going to run the same test with the same setting, same volume, same microphone position. And let's see if the graph looks any different with just these two bass traps. So I wanted to show you guys the acoustic panel before I put them on the wall. This is from GIK Acoustics and this is the 5.25, 5 and a quarter um, depth. This is how thick this is in size. So this is really cool because with GIK Acoustics, you guys can choose different thicknesses, different frequency response that you want to uh, target. You can change the color of the fabric. You can get different sizes. This is a 24 by 48, 24 by 48, but you can get 25 by 24, 12 by 12. Well, you can kind of mix and match the size that's best for your room. But this is a base trap. It may look like a regular acoustic panel, but the type of material that's in here is made to absorb low base frequencies, mid base frequencies, 60 hertz on upwards. So I have two of these now. The panels that I have in my room are not for bass. They're made for more mid range sounds, right? On upwards. And this design has a scatter plate. So yes, it has a panel like this, but on the front, is a scatter plate here called a diffuser. And what this does is the best of both worlds. 
underneath the diffuser is a panel like this that absorbs certain frequencies, but not all of them get absorbed. The diffusion panel diffuses a little bit of it and scatters it around the room. So you don't want to deaden your room too much. You want to keep it a little bit more lively, more, uh, you know, more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Natural. So this plate here will scatter some frequencies to keep things from collecting in the room, but it will also absorb some frequencies as well. This is purely absorption. So whatever hits this panel does not bounce back into the room. And that's what I want when it comes to the base. I have four subwoofers that are massive. And then I have these monitors that give me subwoofer performance. So there's a lot of bass in a small room. So bass traps are absolutely necessary for me to try to tame a lot of that extra energy. Now, when you're placing these, they have a designated destination. You don't just throw these anywhere in your room. For me, I'm starting with the corners of my front wall. You want to start with the front of the room. If not, do the back of the room near the corners or in the corners if you can to absorb a lot of that base energy. So you may have, you can't see this one here, but I'll show you guys. I have the other one on the wall. It is in the corner of the room so that it can absorb some of that low base energy that's getting stuck in that corner, which causes peaks and knolls or just unwanted boundary gain. This one will go over here behind this speaker here. So I'm gonna get this um, up on the wall and then we'll run that same measurement at the same volume. The mics, I didn't touch it, it's in the same spot. We'll run that calibration one more time and see if the graph has changed at all. All right, so let's take a look one more time. This is the graph that we did with no base traps here. Little ugly looking, really bad dip down here. I'm not expecting a dramatic change, honestly. It's only two added panels to a room that probably needs another four. So I'm not expecting too much of a change, but I am expecting something to be different. So let's go to measure. Let's name this with base traps. And let's run that same five to 500 test. All right, so let's see what has happened here. So blue is the new test and orange is the old test. So let's kind of see if we can digest what changed because I am seeing a little bit of a difference here. So <laughs> this doesn't really matter, but down to five hertz, we gained probably, I don't know, that's a good three dBs at five hertz. So that's showing about 76 hertz there. Um, we got a little bit bigger of a dip around nine hertz, but again, none of that matters. I can't hear it anyway. But 10 hertz up to 30 seem to have... Uh, relatively stayed the same, but maybe smoothing out just a little bit. Let's go, let's go here between 30 and 50. So it looks like we gained a, a little bit of output at 30 hertz. We gained a little bit at 40, 40, 40 45 hertz there. So good. We, we fixed a little bit of a dip, but minute differences overall. We gained some output at the 50, 55 range, which is something that I was trying to target. I'm trying to target 55, 60 up to 100. I'm trying to fix that. So we actually gained a little bit. So they did make a little bit of a difference there. But let's look at our problem child right here. So 55, 60, 65, 70 hertz, it raised a little bit. We gained maybe a dB or two, but we actually got worse at our 80 hertz there. But we got better at 90, got better at 95. It's crazy. Uh, a little bit after 100, we smoothed it out just a little bit. Uh, some of those peaks here at 100 to 200, that got a little bit better. So it did make a difference. Am I going to be able to hear it? Absolutely not. And what this comes down to is two things. One, I only bought two traps. <laughs> so I'm not expecting a world of change with two traps. But I can also kind of play with where I put them. Right now, they're behind the speakers, behind the screen. Um, so... They're doing their job there, but maybe if I move them to the back of the room, maybe that makes a bigger difference. And I won't do that in this video, but if you guys want to know, I may post it in the community page or something. I'll try them in the back of the room. I'll put both of them in the back and see if that makes a bigger difference than them in the front. But we can play around with placement and see if there's better places for them, or I just may get more. Well, um, we'll see. But overall, base traps 
do their job, but you need a lot of them, and you're going to need them to be pretty thick if you're going to want to make any kind of difference. All right, guys, so I'm going to end this video there. I know if you're watching this video, you're going to be like, why do I need acoustic treatment? If that's all that it did, it didn't do anything, why do I need to get that? I don't want this video to be a misconception that you don't need acoustic treatment because it doesn't do anything. It truly does, but you can't just put one or two panels in a room and call it quits. And you can't just put them anywhere in the room. They have to go in certain locations to be the most effective. So acoustic treatment is one of the best upgrades that I've made to the room. Remember, I already have three panels already on, on the wall now doing certain things, but different panels do different jobs. And you gotta make sure you buy the right kind of panels to fix the right kind of problems. So yes, my graph didn't change too much, but it did change. So there is an effect that acoustic treatment has. You just need enough of them to make a difference. So with that being said, if you don't have acoustic treatment, I highly recommend it. If I was to take my acoustic treatment, uh, my acoustic treatment out of the room, it would sound so bad. And this graph would be all over the place. But I have panels up on the ceiling, I have panels on the walls, and then I have the bass traps behind the screen. And I wouldn't have even this good of a response if I didn't have the panels. So don't let this video deter you from base traps. They are highly necessary. Just make sure you get the right ones, get the right thickness, make sure that they treat the right things and that you put them in the right spot. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below and let me know, are you using acoustic treatment? If you are, what has been your results? What kind of acoustic treatment are you using and how good has it been for you? Let me know down below in the comment section. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are not already, and we will see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace.